part, that angle with the swing, he fucked the ball. And he went out and he hit 20 points higher, okay? Four bunch four home runs, more contact, okay? Laid off the pitches, forced them inside. Okay, so what was the next, what's the next thing they said? Uh, Ryan's power to right center is disappearing. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm, you know, I'm a real patient guy. I have eight-year-old kids that I teach. You know what's like trying to teach an eight-year-old sometimes? Okay? You gotta have a lot of patience. But I have zero patience for ignorance and stupidity. For people that are so-called in the game, they're in the nut. Time out. Okay. So we see Chris's swing he went out and he started laying off pitches out of the zone of the other part of the plate, which forced him inside. So what did he do? Punished pitches on the inside part of the plate. He wasn't being pitched on the other half of the plate. But when they didn't, it was early in the count, they had to throw a perfect pitch. Which he didn't want to swing on anyways, because the percentages, if anybody's ever seen Ted's book. Ted hit 230 on pitches on the outer half of the plate down at the knees. What do you want to get that? Why do you, you don't go up in there swinging at everything so you don't strike out? You heard? Don't let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game, right? Have you ever heard that saying? Don't, don't be afraid to strike out. Strikeouts aren't bad. It's good to minimize them, but they're not bad. Especially if you mix the other part of the game into the baseball salad. The power numbers and getting on base. And, we know what they are. We know how to manage our game. We know how to manage our routine now. We know what's there. Stats matter. They matter. But you've got to take them with a grain of salt at your age. Because if you hit 500 in high school, and you get into college, and now you're a 260 to 300 there, that's not a bad thing. But psychologically, it takes some getting used to. All right, I've talked a lot. You guys, think, I want to hear what you have to say. Give me some questions. It's gotta be. I'm gonna wait. What's on your mind? Nothing? Am I intimidating? <laughs> Scared? Candy? <laughs> Candy canes? Candy corns? Sarah! Perfect, look at that. So why don't you step out of the box when this guy's throwing a nasty look at it? Candy canes, candy corns, and Sarah. I got you. Instead of going, I hope you don't throw me that curveball again. It's so good. Come on, he's got me some bread. I'm not going to hold your youth and inexperience against you. No? All right, I'll oh, you got one over there. His, pretty much his whole life. And I don't even consider it a problem. Because his numbers were, were really good. I just consider it a, a method by, because of the information that was available to be a method by which we can create a pathway to improvement. Constant improvement. Like, did you hit... A major league. Could you hit major league pitching right now? Right. But you're you're in the right frame of mind because someday yes, right? That's what I'm talking about. You've got to strive for that constant improvement. And, and there's a lot of there's a lot of good coaches out there. There are fun heads out there. But the ignorant part of it, it's okay. It's okay. If they're into it like we are, they're gonna they're gonna figure it out and they're gonna pass that on to you. Don't you be it. Don't wait for instruction. Seek it. You know you can observe a lot by watching. You said that. Come on, that's a yoke of everything, right? You can observe a lot by watching. It gets late and early out here. How can how can these guys get their know what their angles are? Video. The analytics that are available to you guys today are fantastic. You get the set, 
3D analysis, which if you guys haven't heard about it yet, it's only 129 bucks. So, look it up to them. So our group was the first ones to ever use this at baseball Perfect. back in, because you know Trevor. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that and, like four of them. Yep. <laughs> and, we all, and we also have a, a track man in the facility, so. It's perfect. So, and then. Or hit tracks rather, hit tracks. The coach is good, but they got better stuff out there now that slows the swing down and you can actually see it without any blur on it. So you can watch where that where you're going wrong in your swing. Like a perfect swing would be, you know, and I'm not saying you have to do this, okay? But if we just started it from here, a perfect swing would be entering in the zone here. Entering in the zone there. Up on your, oh, that would be a perfect swing. Seek that. So if you're making a move like this, the bat doesn't have any zone to here, as opposed to way back here. You can see that through video now. You can see what you're doing wrong. It's not a nod to the ball thing. It's not a switch the bug. It's not a stay back. It's not a keep the elbow up. It's not all those old stupid cliches that people are using. Okay? Those are big phrases that hitting instructors should never use. Stay back, don't stay back. Here are all the hits. You watch the big leaguers. They're out here. They're at the ball in front of them. Why would you stay back? Why would you let it travel? Why would you let it get deep? How deep, coach? Thank you for asking that question. How about all the way into the catcher's bit? That's really good. Yeah? That's really deep, man. Let's let it get deep. You tell a kid to let it get deep, he's going to be thinking the wrong way. There's that word again. There's that word again. Think. Okay? Hit it out here. And if you have to hit it out here, it's easy to adjust. You can't adjust from a swing and miss. You've got zero adjustment to make from swing and miss. And if you let it travel, let it get too deep, you're going to swing and miss. Your thought process needs to be to hit it in front. So if you work on a key, put it out in front of you, here, and put it high. Oh, you got it Your hands want to be at the top of the strike zone as they come through. Then if the pitch is low, you drop the head. If you drop the hands and the head, you got no time to make any adjustments. Zero. Yeah, all they got to do is, all the pitcher has to do is to get you to go, and he's got you. But if you're like this, keeping your hands in that launch position, you, you have a chance. And if you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to win more battles. So, you got to do more questions. What are the two most common, the two things that most kids under the age of 15 do to keep them from advancing beyond high school? Feet movement and head movement. Okay? So I'm going to give you something to practice. Remember this. There's three things that you should do. You want to make sure if you're a stepper or you're a no stepper, whatever you do, okay? You want to make sure that that front foot is in the same spot every time, the same width, every time. Feet, you want to finish above your shoulders. You don't want to finish down here. You guys wait. Right? You're going to do that. But you're going to practice this. Finish above your shoulders. Feet, finish, and then pose for two seconds. Every time you swing the bat, forever, for the rest of your life, when you're practicing, two things happen. Number one, for me, I can see the swing. I can rewind it right in my head immediately if you're posed. Because it's so fresh in my mind. But when you move, I have to remember where you were and then try to rewind it from, a, from an image instead of an actual position. Number two, it's going to teach you how to feel what just happened in your swing. Okay? Chris always said, Chris didn't rely as much on video and analytics as much as I did. So I pounced on that because you have to learn how to feel your swing. 
it's really important because you have to feel when you're an inch off. You gotta feel when you're two inches off or four. You gotta feel that move so you can fix it from pitch to pitch. <coughs> or at least adapt to it that. And certainly from game to game. Okay, are you with me now? Is this, are we getting someplace? I mean, there's a lot of stuff here, guys. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna take it a step further down. Okay, so how does a major league hitter think? And dude, do you think he just goes up there and sees the ball and hits it? That's the worst advice you can give anyone. See it, hit it. See it, hit it. How many times have you heard it from Hall of Famers? Well, they don't do that. I'm telling you, they don't do it. They see it, then they track it. Like when an eye doctor does this to you, with a with an eye doctor, track, right? And they're looking for the muscles in your eyes moving in. Next thing is be easy. Relax. Be easy. So you relax. You're not trying to swing too hard. Which will incorporate back into the beat finish pose. And then go off on it. You're thinking right center, so the mechanics, mainly this happens. That ain't. So see it, track it, be easy, go off. Okay, that's pretty advanced right there. So that's what they're thinking when they're practicing. But in games and stuff, because big league hitter, pitchers have such good stuff, they have to factor in sequencing and location to their thought process. Because you've heard the, every major league hitter, except for my kid, and I don't know why he doesn't get it, but he will. They sit on a pitch. You know that? They're sitting on, they're waiting for a pitch. I talked to Manny Ramirez in Iowa. I said, hey Manny, you remember that home run you hit the right center against the Cleveland Indians back in, uh, I think it was 99, 90. when Pedro yeah. came in and pitched out six innings in the league, and, and you, you know, you took two, you took, you, you, you took two fastballs right down the middle. Right down the middle. Very hittable pitches. And then he hits, Slider, with the slider off the plate, guy comes back into a slider in his own, he hits it over the right field. He was waiting. He's like, I, I, he's, I know I can hit the fastball. I wanted to hit the slider. I'm like, really? <laughs> Me and he's near. 5'9, 5'10, 555 on Right? Sequencing, location. You can think either one or both of those ways. What I like to see, especially at this level, high school level, you can dominate the competition just by looking for a pitch on the outside corner of the knees. It's that simple. Really, I'm serious. There might be five pitchers in your area and you might not get to face them more than two times in the season. If you get 10 or 30 against guys that are throwing 90, you can actually pitch, okay? But looking away on the outside part of the plate, every time you're going to play, that can be your approach. Simple approach. Look for a pitch of the other after the plate. And if he's one ball in and one ball up, you're going to hammer it up the middle. If he's over the middle of the plate, you're going to crush it. If it's on the inside part of the plate, you're going to really hammer it because you're being aggressive. Simple way of thinking. Okay? Or, if you're feeling good about seeing all those pitches, then you go back to hitting hard hitting in the air. Which really means you're trying to hit a home run every single time you go to the plate, which is good. Because you're not going to hit a home run every time you go to the plate. You're going to hit doubles because you're trying to hit home runs because you missed it. And then when you really miss it, you're going to hit a line drive over the shortstop's head for a single. Or over the second baseman's head for a single. Your misses are going to be on the middle of the ball instead of on the bottom of the ground. But if you're trying to hit the top of the ball, you're never going to hit the middle of the ball ever. Ever. Never. I mean, when you're hitting down on the ball and trying to force the ball out in a different direction, it can be done, but it has to be so perfect. Golf, right? He goes, yeah, golf, you swing down on the ball to catch it. The loft is built into the club. Okay, it's already built into the club, so it goes to the end. The golf is the only, with, with a eight iron and up, is the only sport. Well, as far as striking the ball, is the only time you ever want to pinch the top of the ball so you put backspin. 
That shit is overrated, it happens naturally. You don't have to force it. If the, the physics of the game will allow you to backspin the ball. If you're thinking about backspinning the ball, you're going to be chopping. Guys, you'll never hit at the next level if you're in that way. It's not going to happen. I offered $5,000 to anybody that could find me a major league hitter that swings down on the ball. Don't you think that would be worth pouring over the internet and trying to find images at least for five thousand dollars? And I'm talking about hitting instructors now. They just nobody looked, nobody could do it. I looked. I couldn't find it. It's up.